Right. And it's a translation, it's an erroneous translation from a word by Francis Picabi, of which there were 40 or 50 aphorisms, of which I translated seven or eight, mistranslated seven or eight. Poop. Nature makes my teeth to hurt. Each conviction lengthens the sentence. Women are interesting when I look at them. Art is medicine for imbeciles. Great art is a great mistake. If it's inspiration you want, drop your panties. <laughs> my greatest heart. If I fall in love with my friend's wife, she's fucked. Ultimate, I'm fucked, she's fucked. And this is called Epithalamium, which means a poem in celebration of a marriage. Pussy put her paw into the pail of paint. Hip hop, pip pop, tip top, popcorn. The dipper tipped and the syrup dripped upon her apron. Philippa put the parson's parcel beside the professor's paper. Bowser buried his bone inside a barrel. The brown bear stole the bumblebee. White snow whirled everywhere. The able laborer objects to the bride. Adam and Eve stumbled over a rubber tube. Mama made a muffler and a muff for me. My Mary's asleep by the murmuring stream. The meadow mouse uses the lamp for a moonbeam. In Minneapolis, Minnesota, there are many married men. Many Americans are making money in Mexico. And this is called poem. God made a world out of his dreams of majestic mountains, oceans, and streams, prairies and plains, and wooded lands. Then paused and thought, I need someone to stand on top of the mountains, to conquer the seas, explore the plains, and climb the trees. Someone to start out small and grow sturdy and strong like a tree. And so, our Saroyan punched him out. <laughs> And this is called in four parts. This was all taken from an issue of the New York Times. One, a person can lie around on an uncrowded beach, and when too much peace and quiet gets on his nerves, he can always get dressed and tour Israel. Two, Mayor Frank X. Graves today ordered the arrest of Allen Ginsberg. If the police could prove that the poet smoked marijuana while looking at the Passaic Falls yesterday, Three, the Jewish Memorial Hospital's Junior League will give its second annual discotheque benefit Sunday at the round table. Four, William Carlos Williams, the Patterson, New Jersey physician, was a strong and vigorous poet who spoke in the American idiom. Do you want to stop a minute? Yes. To whoever comes is coming in. <coughs> This poem is called A Personal Memoir of Tulsa, Oklahoma. One time I read this biography of Hart Crane, and it was fairly interesting, but it didn't ever mention that he was homosexual, which seemed really odd because that, was, that seemed to be the, one of the main points of his entire life and work. And so I thought I, I would correct that and write a poem called A Personal Memoir of Hart Crane, as if I had known him and... Uh, and I would tell about how we used to go to Times Square and he used to pick up sailors and things like that. But, but I really couldn't get to do that. But, but it, the, out of that idea, I decided to write a personal memoir of Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I had lived from 1955 to 60. And this is it. There we were, on fire with being there then, and so we put our pants on and began to get undressed. You were there then, and there where you were, we were. And I was there too. We had no pants on. And I saw your penis there. It was right there where we were, and it was with us. We looked at it there, and you said, Why, hello there, Oliver, to me there beside you without any pants on. There where I could hear you saying, Why, hello there. Then Frank came in, and George, and Bill, and Cannonball, and Frank, and Simon, Jonas, Jenny Lou, and Bob, and gentle Millie Jean, and Hannibal the Alp. They took their hats and coats off and all began to puke. They puked on Cal and Billy 
and on Benjamin, Lucifer, Jezebel, Asmador, and Frank. Then they left. Frank was much younger than there, and he was wearing hair on his belly. He looked like a model airplane, a dark, gloomy navel in its tail. And you were there, there in his tail. You were there, and hair was there, and air was there, there up in the air among the hair. And you were saying, why, hello there. And your pants, when you finally put them on there, had a hole in them, there where your penis was, before it flew away from there to find itself. And the hole there was wide, and it was deep. It was dark there, and supersonic aeroplanes were there, and they were whirring. Whirr, whirr, whirr went the throbbing aeroplane as they zoomed out at us from in there, for we were there where your pants met the sea, and we were glad. I was there, and Jock, and Zach, and Brett, and we met your penis passing by. It said, Goodbye, mild starlight of the sign of fawn, as it rode into the galaxy named Fang. These next few poems are from a, a book called Life of a Man, and that book was by the Italian poet Giuseppe Andretti, and I translated it into English, some of the poems into English. I didn't know Italian, but but I translated it phonetically. That is, I, these poems, generally speaking, sound exactly like the Italian line sounds. Yeah, the way you speak Italian. Yeah, not the way I speak Italian, but the way, just the way Italian would sound translated into kind of crude English. They were all very short poems. The first one is called Long Time No See. Long time no see, old partner. Come over and shake hands. Try out my old lady. The next one is called As Usual. Take off your hat and coat and give me all your money. I have to buy some pills and I'm flat broke. The next one is called K Sarah Sarah. And as you took your pants off, her brother came in, bringing some begonia. K Sarah Sarah. <laughs> the next one is called December. Brother and sister departed with apologies to the mother for intercourse in their hearts. Is that your door? Okay. The next one is called Tooting My Horn on Duty. Tooting my horn on duty in the infantry made my name mud. P.U. In the army I had nosebleeds. The infantry was so distracting it kindled up in my nose an invisible odor that hindered my tooth. One day while on duty I rammed into a chestnut and got blood all over my flute not to mention this nosebleed. I spat out so many teeth, I knew it was an omen. The vitamins I took made me ill. Ten blood transfusions. It was almost all over when two big rocks stopped the bleeding. This then was my unhappy childhood. The next one is called Matinee. Morning ripped out of my mind again. And the last one of these is called Corporal Pellegrini. He was ugly. She kissed the poor fellow on his belly. Ay, ay, ay. Wild horses couldn't hold him. He snaked her carcass around his finger like a bowling ball. Come and get it. They threw him in the pen and busted his illusions on the fires of Corregidor. His rifle slowly fired better and better, killing the idiot. If that's all of these, why don't you turn it off for a second? This is called Personal Poem. It's 5.03 a.m. on the 11th of July this morning, and the day is bright gray, turning green. I can't stop loving you, says Ray Charles, and I know exactly what he means, because the Swedish policeman in the next room is beating on my door, demanding sleep and not Ray Charles. He doesn't know that in three hours I go to court to see if the world will let me have a wife. He couldn't, of course. It wouldn't occur to him, nor would it occur to him to write scotch tape body in a notebook, but it did occur to John Stanton, alias the knife fighter, age 18, so why are my hands shaking? I should know better. And this is called February Air. 
can't cut it, night in New York City. It's alive inside my tooth on St. Mark's Place, where exposed nerves jangle. That light isn't on for me. That's it, though you are right here, too. It's Red River time on TV, and Andy's Brillo Box is on, the icebox is on, too. Above St. Nazaire, the commando is poised. That means tonight's raid is on. The monkey at the typewriter is turned on. The tooth hurts. You'd better move on. And now I'll read from a long poem called Tambourine Life, which is dedicated to Ann Kepler. And it's in 77 parts or some such anonymous, uh, insane number. It's in 74 parts. <coughs> Fuck communism. <coughs> it's red, white, and blue. In the bathroom. <coughs> Shut up. <laughs> 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 Fuck communism. <laughs> it's red, white, and blue in the bathroom. Cooley. One dollar, you mother. Make all your friends stop. Now there's an idea. Art Forum, 723 and one half North Cienaga Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. Back to the wall. It's all in California, thanks to Jack. I mean, it's all right here. It's morning, and I'm looking over the wall at Mr. Pierre Loki and his nameless dog. They work well together on paper, chasing a tiger across a white expansiveness that is not lacking in significance. Well, what is? Two. The apples are red again in Chandler's Valley, redder for what happened there. Never did know what it was. Never did care. The end. On a pillow, naturally. A doormat, lust, steam, a hiss, guilty. I see some handwriting on the wall of the bridge, intersection. New York Post, 10 cents. Tip the newsboy, over. A million laughs. That's the party line. Yes, he's working on the paper, Mr. Horatio Alger. He has a lovely talent. Thank you, here's your change. Three, I'm touched. Here, take this penny. There's no need for the past. The sun is out. It's night. I mean, it is night. And I love you better since this seizure of my eyeballs. Take off those fuzz panties. Go ahead. It's a big world. The big guys do it. To Annie, between Uluga and Pawnee, Guyama, Pawnee. of my days open up in the garden of my memory in America. I have had the courage to look backwards. It was like polio. I shot my mouth off. I need money. That money that at last means less than a band-aid on a toadstool. Ouch. That band-aid had an ouch in it. Who notices a toadstool in the street? Everyone who has on a band-aid. That toadstool had a band-aid on it. Five. He doesn't know how to take a vacation. Dick doesn't know how to take a vacation either. That is not to infer that Dick is a toad under a band-aid. Far from it. A toad is a cold-blooded fellow. Dick is warm and full of blood. When you leave, Dick, turn the refrigerator to vacation, please. See, now I'm going to read three cereal poems. Cornflakes, oatmeal, rye crisp. They were composed, excuse me, I mean not composed, using the John Cage animal cracker method of composition. This seems to be mushrooming into a major work of high seriousness. I'd fight for that. I didn't have to. Eight, true love. There's only one way to describe true love. Does anyone know that one way? Mr. Nelson Algren, 1958, West Evergreen, Chicago, Illinois. In Chicago, Illinois, you are really at home, whether you like it or not, baby. And whether you like it or not, you are my friend. So don't piece me off. Nine, come into my house tonight, Dick, and I will show you this new word. House at night. It and this page, there, not here, are not the same, except in a manner of speaking. It is not a portrait of Jeanne Marie, 
so it could be. It is also not a portrait of Barbara Harris, whom I don't know, though I like her plenty. She's a lot like me. My name is Mr. Brigadoon. Ten. I am constantly being caught up in my own commotion. It is not a slow commotion. The radio turns me on. Eleven. Commotion over. Clothes in hand. I wait in Mr. Ron Paget's fur-lined bridge jacket, who shivers now in Paris, Oklahoma, between Galveston and Mobile. A word, incidentally, invented, cross that out, coined by Mr. Marcel Duchamp to describe a lady finger. Well, it's too cold in here, but not for me, in my present balloon state, to write this love song, Cold Rosy Dawn in New York City, hovering over the radio. 13. I woke up this morning. It was night. You were on my mind, looking for a home, for the bull weevil. Nothing like that in New York City. It's all in Oklahoma, where you all can learn to talk like me. If you all is Mr. Ron Padgett, the American Express. 14. He's a good friend of mine, although he fears he is unable to love people who have poly tests, whatever that may be. Thanks anyway. You are not without Cone Brio, Nest Cafe? Thanks, Ed. 15. I quote from The Code of the West, a work by Mr. Ed Sanders, whose poem from jail I highly recommend. On second thought, I quote instead this work by Mr. Marcel Duchamp, which, oddly enough, I also give high recommendation. 16. The Code of the West. 1. Sob when you read Black Beauty. 2. The true test of a man is a bun. 3. Dare to do your duty. 4. Press the tip of the tongue on the gum behind the upper teeth as for tea, and expel the breath with vibrations of the vocal cords. 5. He went to the windows of those who slept, and over each pane like a fairy wept. 6. Halt. 7. Loosen your smooth. 8. Close your eyes and doze. 9. Joe, Joe, this shepherd's passion is much upon my fashion. 10. Drill. 17. You know, once people paid no attention to me, Mayakovsky, in the garden of my memory, and now passion's flower wilts constantly because my lady love is a holy roller. Her body is a sponge. It has no mud. Tonight's heat will dry that mud, and it will fall into dust. I'm already in it, the body, I mean, not the dust. However, if you are in the dust, kindly hop into this tub of water, please. Now hand me that quail. Lean me against the belly of a woman. You are that woman. 18. Knock on the door of her house. Knock, knock. The sun is out, river flowing, in a window, a geranium, trembling, automobile droning across the screen. Turn back to look. You don't see the door open. You are standing there. I mean, I am sitting here, between the door to a world full of others, like yourself, and the droning solitude of this here Los Angeles freeway. How to get off? 19. Hi, Bear. Do you believe in magic? Good, because I am here to make a monkey out of you. The best way to make yourself a monkey is to jump down, spin around, pick a bale of cotton. If you don't understand that, you will never understand your country's history. One thousand volumes a year ooze from the minds of dead monkeys, and yet we are still too dull to understand them or that. Kiss me. It is not at all unpleasant to be kissed by a monkey, if you are a monkey. I am not a monkey. I do not have a monkey on my back. I am not a monkey's uncle. 20. Only a monkey would read this. The Encyclopedia of Flies. Over 250 flies photographed in living color. These 250 flies were tied up, executed by hand, not my hand. 21. There are no flies on New York City. 22. There are, however, two sorts of landscapes the interior and the exterior, as well as the other, which we will not go into here. 23. 
One song I have always liked is Hope You Happy Monkey. That's the truth. It's by Ruth Cross. 24. There you are. There I go. Past the majestic men's coat. Slightly disheveled is a nice phrase. It has impact. Like the three bricks Alice Neal gave to Joe Gould in 1933. That's Alice's idea of Wonderland. 25. He happens to be a sex expert, among other things. If you are squeamish, I'd better not tell you what other things. How did Red China get the old bomb? No one knows. No one will ever know. Because no one is a tautology. Let's have no truck with tautology. 26. This poem has no truck, although it does provide a sort of reader's digest of oriental sex practices under the sheet. Who threw the panties into mother's teeth is a good example of one of the many unanswered questions life provides. Where did the beautiful British secret agent lose his nighty is another. It was not a majestic nighty, nor was it a man's nighty, unless, of course, the beautiful British secret agent was a female impersonator. Perhaps that was his secret. There has always been a quick turnover among British secret agents. Look, there goes one now. 27. I am here today, a gentleman, with time on my hands. You are in my heart during the four seasons, which are 1. Springtime, 2. Bedtime, and so on. 28. There is a revolution going on in my skin. I have the gift of young skin, no pimples, which is why I am here today. I would like to introduce myself. However, it will be better between us if I don't. See? The victory is not always to the sweet. So keep on the ball, buddy. I mean the button. 29. Come alive. Meet me at the smoke ring. Get your piles out of Vietnam. Let's love one another. Equality for homosexuals. Yes. Stuck. Stand up for dykes. Commemorating the visit of Pope Paul X to New York City, 1965. We won't go. I am for legalized abortion. No man is good three times. 30. Life certainly is marvelous when you're in love, isn't it? Consequently, it is important to be in love most all the time, but not all of the time. When you are in love all the time, you get bored, because life is boring when it's always the same. Isn't it? That's a strange theory. 31. It's a theory of strange. I am in love right now. I am in love with silly name of person in the room. See me about this later. I am not in love with Mr. Walter Speck. He was or was not recently elected to the state assembly. Just for the record, I found Mr. Walter Speck recently at 5 o'clock in the afternoon lying in the gutter on his button. Stay on, allegorical poem about whiskey affairs. 34. Branching out, shooting all night, he grounded himself on a button. 35. You stand, hitting upon things you hadn't thought upon. When you get into the picture, you wake up inside an oval portrait. I mean a woman, a beautiful reminder, sitting on a line. It could be a steamship line, or even a ferry line. 36. Life is not boring when you are Tarzan of the Apes. For example, you step out from behind the bush and you say, Yes, I am Monsieur Tarzan. 37. Dick Gallup arrives at this point and says, Life is boring. 38. Jacques-Louis David is crying in his crib. He is not bored. Jane has given him a banana. 39. Dick reads those lines. They bore him. But I laugh plenty. 40. David is sobbing bitterly in the jungle. Shut up or I'll kill you. He doesn't want to. 41. He wants the white temper of paint with which I am painting out the words in this comic book, Tarzan of the Apes, so that I can fill in new words. 42. The words is a good book. It is the autobiography of Mr. Jean-Paul Sartre from age 0 to 10. In it, he tells what a little shit he was. I have to go doo-doo, says Jacques-Louis David. 
we have words, and he falls asleep unexpurgated. 44. Life is long. It's sure been a long time crossword puzzle since I last was here. That spring of 65, that was. That was my best year. That was also a good year for dances, buildings, and people in the street. In the cell block, a boy invented the mahogany cage before he rested. The climate was a song. Crowds dispersed my purpose, my great calm. Dim light turned me off. The radio parts, the curly hair, me on the floor, saying, 45, go now and get me a bath band-aid. 